All right, this video is designed for physics class. We're going to talk a little bit here in this video about uncertainty and how to do something called error analysis, which college physics students absolutely love. So when we talk about uncertainty, we're going to talk about two different types of uncertainty. Uh, the first of those is called random uncertainty. When you take measurements, uh, we're going to take several measurements, and, and just as a rule of thumb, we're going to take five different measurements. And those five measurements, we're going to do some statistics to. And any variation in our particular measurements is called random uncertainty. So those are deviations in your particular measurement. Uh, the mathematical definition is plus or minus one standard deviation, which I abbreviate SD. And uh, I'll take you through using uh, calculator and Excel explicitly uh, on how to calculate those. The other type of uncertainty you have to worry about is something called systematic uncertainty. And that's the uncertainty in your measuring device. The measuring devices can only measure down so far, and so there's what's called systematic uncertainty in those. Uh, if you see here, I got this ruler, and if you take a look at the ruler, uh, we're measuring in centimeters, and I can measure down to the millimeter, and I can estimate in between each individual millimeter here. And the systematic uncertainty is defined as one half the smallest measurable amount on there. So if I'm measuring in between a millimeter here, I take that millimeter and I divide it by two. So that's that's 0.5 of a millimeter or 0 0.05 centimeters in this particular case because we're probably measuring in centimeters. So you take one half of that and that's going to be your systematic uncertainty. And so down here on the inches, uh, the inches are in sixteenths of an inch, so half of that uh, your your uh, uncertainty, I believe, on that would be one thirty second. Although I'm not an expert on on uh, on the English system uh, uncertainty, but I am on the the metric system. So we measure our items, and we get five or so measurements, and we calculate the standard deviation, and we figure out what the systematic uncertainty of our um, measurement device is. And I should also mention this applies, the systematic uncertainty applies to uh, scales like this. Uh, if you have a digital scale, uh, usually the digital scale uncertainties are going to be whatever the, the smallest readable amount is. Uh, and on occasion, sometimes you have to look up uh, in the, the manual of your device if it's digital and find out what the systematic uncertainty is. So you've got your five measurements and we can calculate the standard deviation and take care of our random uncertainties. And I, sh I should mention here, random uncertainties are, are deviations in where you measure and where at on your measurement device you measure those from. Uh, I can get more specific in class, but you know, you can measure with different parts of a ruler. You don't have to always start at zero. And if you're measuring like the length of a book, you don't have to measure the same exact two points on the book. You can measure several different points. That leads into random uncertainties. Both of those combined are going to give you the total uncertainty of what your measurement is. And you can calculate that using by a Pythagorean sum. You take the square of the standard deviation, add it to the square of the systematic, and that'll give you the total uncertainty, sigma tot, in your calculation. Uh, your, I'm sorry, your measurement. This is like a plus or minus value. You measure something and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm within plus or minus you know, 0.1 centimeter. All right, so if we're going to measure things right, you're going to take five different measurements. So in this example here, we're pretending that uh, we have a volume. And of course, if we're going to measure volume, we need to measure length, width, and height of, of something. Uh, we're assuming it's a rectangular solid that we can measure here. So I'm just going to take length here for an example. And I'm going to take five measurements of the length. And I measure the length of my object, let's say a brick. I measure the length of that brick, and I get these values that you're seeing here, uh, L1 through L5. Now, since I'm doing the measuring, I have to report to you, the reader, what the systematic uncertainty is. So let's say I use a ruler. Systematic uncertainty is 0 0.05. So how in the world do we go about then finding out what uh, our uncertainty is? I can calculate an average pretty easy, and I'll show you how to do that in Excel pretty simply. Uh, so the average of this comes out to be 20.512, but what's our plus or minus? What's our uncertainty in that? Well, to find that uncertainty, we have to calculate the standard deviation. You can use a Texas Instruments calculator, and you can uh, plug those numbers into a list, and you can use your one variable statistics, and that will tell you the average. 
and it'll also give you a couple of standard deviations. And on the calculator, you would be looking for the standard deviation SX. If you're doing this in, cell, in Excel, uh, you're going to be using the sample standard deviation, stdev.s, as your calculation. Uh, sample calculations are used when you have a small number of items, uh, in general, rule of thumb, and uh, the other standard deviations are used when you have larger. All right, so let's say we already know how to do that and we can plug it into Excel. You're going to see how to do that here in a second. So we can have Excel or a calculator find our standard deviation, and uh, that's this number right here, 0 0.07888, etc. So I know my standard deviation uh, right here, and I know my systematic uncertainty. So now I can go back and calculate my uncertainty, sigma L, in my length by Pythagorean sum. So I square the systematic, I square the standard deviation, I add them up, I take the square root, and it turns out my uncertainty is 0 0.0531. Now, for purposes of, you know, sig figs, um, I can't add or subtract any more than two decimal places because I've only got two decimal places here in the average. So I gotta round that off to two decimal places. Well, the two decimal places is 0 0.05. So it turns out that the standard deviation, my random uncertainties didn't account for very much uncertainty. Uh, most of my uncertainty comes from the systematic uncertainty of the, of the ruler. So no matter what we did, even though it looks like it didn't affect anything because the systematic uncertainty and my overall uncertainty are 0 0.05, uh, the reason for that is because of sig figs affecting that. And uh, in this particular case, our measurements were so close together that our random uncertainties did not affect anything at all. So now what? What do we do with all of that? Well, we did all of that calculation now for one variable, and you have to repeat it for all of the variables, like width and height and, and whatever else you need. We needed volumes. We need to measure width and height. So you have to measure the width five times, and you have to find the standard deviation, and you have to look at the systematic uncertainty and find the overall uncertainty. You have to measure the height five times and find the standard deviation of the height and the systematic and find the overall uncertainty in height. Now the question is, is how in the world does that all go into the uncertainty of the volume? We're going to take the lengths with some uncertainties and the widths with some uncertainties and the heights with some uncertainties. We're going to multiply those together to get the volume. So what's the uncertainty in the volume? Well, don't freak out here on this next slide. Um, complicated looking equation, but I'm going to break it down for you. It's actually pretty simple. So error propagations. Uh, let's say I have uh, something I'm going to calculate, and it's in the form of B times C divided by D. It's all multiply and divide. Then our uncertainty, sigma A, over A, so this is our average calculated value, so we calculate A using this formula, the uncertainty in A divided by A, now if you think about that, that's simply like a percent error, our uncertainty divided by our total, that's a percent error. So this formula calculates the percent error, is the square root of the uncertainty in measurement B, this is measurement B, divided by the average value of B, quantity squared plus the uncertainty in C divided by C quantity squared plus the uncertainty in measurement D divided by D quantity squared. Take the square root of all of that. That gives you like the percent error. And then if I want to find sigma A, then all I have to do is multiply this A over here to that percentage and I find out what my sigma a is. What is my plus or minus value on whatever it is I'm calculating? So I think we need to do a little sample problem here and uh, I'm going to be using Excel for this. Um, we have a speed of a car that we're going to try to calculate. Uh, we've measured five times and we've determined the distance that the car travels. We've determined the time that the car travels. Since I'm the one making these measurements, I have to report to you what the systematic uncertainty is and I'm telling you right here, the systematic uncertainty is one meter in the distance, so plus or minus one meter, and the uncertainty in the time is plus or minus one. So obviously I'm not measuring this super accurately, um, so car's traveling about five kilometers or so. All right, um, we're gonna calculate an average, we're gonna calculate a standard deviation, we're gonna calculate um, then our uncertainty in the distance and our uncertainty in the time. And what I have already done is I've plugged all of these numbers into Excel. So I've got the exact same numbers here. 
already plugged in, which if you're playing along and want to bring up Excel and pause this for the time being and, and plug these numbers in here, I'm quickly just double checking to make sure I didn't do any typos on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using Excel for you and we're going to go through how to do these formulas in here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here so we can see this better. And we're going to take you through how to enter this in here. All right, so I've got the numbers in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is take the average of this. And Excel has a nice way to find averages of things. And uh, I'm going to show you the hard way to do this, and then I'll show you the, uh, the easy way to do it on the other side. Whenever you're entering formulas, you always start in Excel with an equal sign. And we want to find the average, and so I'm going to start typing the word average here. And right there's average, it pops up. You can also get it by doing the FX button and doing searches if you're not an Excel pro, but I'm just going to start typing. And so I'm going to bring up the average, and I'm going to double click on that. And now I've got this parenthesis. Now up here you got the formula bar, and you can also see it right here. It wants to know the average of what numbers. So I'm going to go over here to the top number, and I'm going to highlight these five numbers. So I clicked and held down, I highlighted them, and I'm going to finally do an end parenthesis here. So I'm going to take the average of B3 through B7. And I'm going to click the check mark. Boom. 5155.8. Not going to worry about sig figs at this point. I never worry about sig figs until the very end. All right, so what's the easy way to do that? Well, another way to do that, uh, I'm going to expand my Excel here a little bit. And if I do that under editing right over here, do you see that little sigma button? If I click on that, you can take a sum, you can take an average, you can count the number of entries, all kinds of different stuff in here. So to do this simply, since this empty cell is right below what I want. I'm just going to highlight all of these spaces right here. And that blank space doesn't have a number in it, so it's not going to affect the calculation. I'm going to go over here to this summation symbol, and I'm going to tell it to find the average. And the average is 50, I'm sorry, 152.6. So a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, I could have also just taken this and did a control C for copy and pasted it into here. And it just would have automatically moved it from column B to column C calculating everything. Next thing we're going to do is a standard deviation. So we're going to do a standard deviation calculation. So we're going to start with an equal sign. This cell is equal to, I'm going to start typing standard deviation. And there's two that pop up. There's a dot P and a dot S. Uh, the dot P is called the population standard deviation. The dot S is called the sample. We have a small number. We didn't measure every possible add infinitum number of distances and times of the car. So we have a sample. So we're going to use STDEV, the standard deviation of our sample. And double click on it, and it'll pop up. And it wants to know, OK, what numbers do you want to find the standard deviation of? And I highlight those numbers. I probably don't have to end in parentheses. It probably does this automatically. But I end a parenthesis, and I click Enter. And there is my standard deviation for that. Now, to make this even quicker, I'm just going to hold down, and well, you know what? I'm just going to right click. I'm going to copy this. So, copy, go in here, and paste. And uh, let's see here. What am I supposed to do here? Let's paste formulas. Boom. All right, so my standard deviation here in the time is 17 seconds. All right, so far, so good. Next up, we have to calculate the sigma values. So, if you remember the sigma values, are, um, well, I don't have one on that slide right there. The sigma values are um, the square of the systematic uncertainty and plus the square of the standard deviation. Add it up, take the square root of it. So we got we to gotta follow that type of formula right here. All right, uh, the standard deviations I didn't plug in here. I should have put those in here. So I'm just going to do um, systematic uncertainties here. I'm going to type in a 1 and a 1. This is the systematic uncertainty of the distance, which remember, I told you what it was right here. And the other one is the systematic uncertainty of the time, because I told you what the systematic uncertainty was right here. All right, so I'm just going to type those in there. I'm going to use those as a reference. Now, OK, when I do this formula, I probably could have just typed it in. But I wanted you to see that you could have it in an Excel column. So we're going to calculate this. So now we have to enter in a formula by hand. This is not a formula that Excel automatically has in, or at least I don't know that it has. So I'm going to enter it manually. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the formula. And I'm going to pause this video here and bring that formula up, because I want you to reference it here just a second. We'll take a look at it. All right, I brought the formula in from another page. 
and you can see we have the square root of SD squared plus SYS squared and I'm going to start typing that formula in manually here into this it'll also appear up here at the top in the formula bar and so I got equals now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do underneath the radical first so I'm going to do the SD squared and so I'm going to start with a um, a parenthesis because this is all underneath the radical so parenthesis where's the standard deviation the standard deviation um, is right here and I'm going to square it and then I'm going to add the systematic uncertainty of our distance which is this one I'm going to move this in here so you can see them both and I square that and okay yeah I could have just typed ones in here but I wanted to show how to reference the formulas and that's all underneath the square root so I've wrapped it now in parentheses and so I now uh, I need to take the square root of that because the last thing you do is you take the square root of both of those and so I want to bring in the parentheses uh, so the parentheses off caret 0.5 because raising it to the one half power is the same as square rooting and we have a sigma of 1.303 etc alright now I can just copy this I'm gonna do control C control V I'm going to enter this so you can see what the formula looks like. So the formula is uh, cell C10, which is in blue. You can see it highlighted in blue. That's nice about Excel. It color codes things for you so you can immediately bring your eyes to it. So I'm squaring that plus my systematic uncertainty of the time, which I told you was one second, and it's squaring that. Wrap in parentheses, take the square root, and we have a uncertainty in the time of 17.0675. So we now have our uncertainties in that. All right, down here we want to calculate what is the overall velocity. Well, the velocity is going to be the distance divided by the time. Start with an equal sign. Distance divide by time. And I, I'm sorry, I misclicked there. You're supposed to take the averages of those. Sorry, average distance. Average distance right here divided by the average time. And there. I'm not going to do anything with sig figs yet. So there's my velocity, 33.78, etc. That would be in meters per second, pretty fast. Next here, we're going to have sigma v over v, the uncertainty in v over v. I'm going to pause here and I'm going to bring up the formula so we can follow the formula when we're doing that. Okay, so here I got the formula and I've cut off the d part because we only measured two things. So sigma b over b is going to be our uncertainty in the distance divided by the distance quantity squared and sigma c over c is going to be our uncertainty in the time over the time that's this b and c is the average of those the average distance and the average time and i already have the sigmas so i already got them calculated so all i got to do down here is is go in here and do the uh the math so we start with an equal sign so sigma d over d i'm going to start with a parenthesis and I'm going to do uh, sigma d, that's going to be this right here, my uncertainty in distance, divided by my average distance, end parenthesis, caret, squared, plus, begin parenthesis. And again, I'm doing everything underneath the radical first. We're going to do sigma t over t. So my sigma t is going to be this right here, Dow color coded in purple, divided by my average time end parenthesis caret squared so now I gotta take the square root of that oops I haven't taken the square root of it so I'm gonna up here in the formula bar and I'm going to start another beginning parenthesis and I'm gonna do another ending parenthesis notice I'm up here at the bar right here draw your attention up here so I've wrapped now everything in parenthesis again I'm gonna do a caret 0.5 to raise it to the one half power so now my percent uncertainty is about 11 percent or so All right, last thing we have to do now is find sigma v. And so we've got this calculation over here. So um, the sigma v, I gotta multiply my average velocity over. So that's pretty easy. I just set it equals. Um, so this is going to be my uh, sigma v over v. So that's my percent error. Do an asterisk for time and multiply it by my average velocity. So what's 11% of 33? Boom. 3.77 ish so when I'm reporting my velocity 
Now's when I do sig figs. This is at least when I do them. Um, my smallest number here is three sig figs, so my answer is in three sig figs. So 3.33. Uh, I said 3.33, but 33 point, I need one more digit, so this 8 rounds the 7 up to an 8, so that's going to be 3.8, and you can look up how to do a plus or minus, I'm just going to do plus or minus like this, plus or minus, and now I'm going to add my sigma v on here, um, I'm allowed to have one decimal point, so I'm going to make that 3.8 meters per second, that's my reported velocity just move that down here. So I've calculated the average speed of the car, 33.8 meters per second, and my range of uncertainty, my plus or minus, is 3.8 meters per second. All right, that's the quick crash course. I'm sorry this video was so long, but we had a lot of stuff to do. Uh, you could also use a calculator. You put the numbers into the list and you do one variable statistics. The one variable statistics will shoot out the average values it will shoot out the standard deviation and you would look for SX for the sample standard deviation and then these you have to do by hand you gotta calculate those in your calculator your calculator won't do them although you could probably write a program and have them do that alright alright if you have any questions you can see me in school thank you very much